from number 3 in the book of fasting hadith number 1901 our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi said that anyone who fasts in this month with faith seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all his past sins will be forgiven that means if we truly with sincerity fast in this month and seek the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all our past sins will be forgiven imagine it is such an easy way to have our sins forgiven of the past and our beloved Prophet Muhammad also said it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari volume number 3 in the book of fasting hadith number 1904 this is a very long hadith which has basically four points our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that all the children of Adam all the deeds that they do are for themselves except for fasting fasting is for me and I will reward him and he further said that fasting is a shield it prevents you from sin and the person who observes the fast he should abstain from obscenity from yelling and from ignorance and if someone yells at him or abuses him he should say I am fasting I am fasting and the third point our beloved prophet said in this hadith is that I swear by Allah in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad that the breath of a faster the person who fasts is sweeter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the scent of musk Allah. and he finally said in this hadith that there are two things when a faster is happy and looks forward to it the first is when he breaks the fast and the second is when he meets the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and further it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Nur chapter number 24 verse number 31 it says oh you believe truly have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the bliss that means try and enter Jannah it's mentioned in Surah Aqaf chapter number 46 verse number 13 and 14 that those are the people who worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are steadfast in faith the word is istikam they are steadfast in faith that there is only one Allah and no one else and they shall not have any fear nor that shall grieve these are the people who are the people of paradise and they shall be rewarded for all the goods they have done Allah. so this is advice for the people that they should take the best of this month and should not spend time on trivial things and spend their time in the worship of Allah and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking for forgiveness Mashallah. now we'll have a short break inshallah we'll meet again it is Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. And I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers. And today we're discussing the topic let's welcome Ramadan. Next question is you've alluded to that in some of the beautiful hadiths you've mentioned just now, but um, what specific reason is it that? Ramadan is called the month of forgiveness or is known as the month of yes, forgiveness. Yes, as I rightly mentioned earlier that a beloved Prophet Muhammad said it's in a hadith of Sahih Bukhari, Ram number 3 book of fasting, hadith number 1901 a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that if anyone fasts in the month of Ramadan with the proper intention with faith and asking for reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will forgive all your past sins and this message is further repeated in the Musnad Ahmad volume number 3 hadith number 11524 where it's mentioned that any person who fast in the month of Ramadan with the proper intention seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will have all his previous sins atoned and further it's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number one, hadith number 450, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that the time between the five prayers and the two Jummas and from one Ramadan to the other 
is the time for expiration of your sins. This is the time where you can have all your sins forgiven. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad also said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, verse number four, in the book of Tawbah, Hadith number 6644, a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night time, a person who asks for forgiveness, he forgives the sin for the sin he has committed in the day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the daytime, he forgives the sin for a person who asks for forgiveness for the sin he has committed at night. So this is the best month of forgiveness, the month of Ramadan, where you can easily have your sins forgiven because the gates of heaven open and the gates of hell are closed. Therefore, it's called the month of forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. No wonder everybody wants to be active in that month. Now we know why. SubhanAllah. Dr. Zakia, um, are there any particular activities a Muslim should concentrate upon during this blessed month of Ramadan? And of course, we should relate to you the importance of the fact that our viewers really can gain massive benefit by knowing specific activities they can get involved in and they can start planning the Ramadan now. Yes, I believe that this is a very good question because most of the activities we'll be dealing as time goes on in the episode. But just to give a brief outline, I will just specify a few important, because the whole answer will take very long. The few important points that will be noted is that number one, it is the niyyah. The niyyah is very important. The niyyah of fasting should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for a fasting to be accepted, the niyyah is important. So making the niyyah is very important, without which the fasting will not be accepted. Number two is observing the sunnah of the fast that we'll be dealing in detail in the next few days. But just a point to be noted that one of the important sunnah is that we should have suhur as late as possible, that is just before the break of dawn, just before Fajr Salah, and we should break our fast, have iftar as early as possible, immediately after sunset. Furthermore, in this blessed month, we should be careful and we should avoid all things which are prohibited, which are haram, and all things which are makro. And this is the best opportunity where a person, if he has certain activities which are against the Sharia, whether he's doing haram activities or makro activities, this is the best time he can abstain from it. And that will be a good habit which inshallah he may abstain maybe throughout his life. For example, if a person is habituated to drinking alcohol, if he can abstain from having alcohol from the break of dawn to sunset, he can abstain from it from the cradle to the grave. Similarly, we should take care that we should abstain from things which are makru. For example, it is makru to stand and drink water. And if we have to do that, so see to it that in this month of Ramadan, while having water, we should sit down. This is the sunnah of the Prophet. So it's a good month in which you can abstain from the haram activities which you have been doing, maybe some of them, or the makro activities. Furthermore, it's a good time where you can implement many of the sunnah of the Prophet in your day-to-day life. For example, maybe sporting a beard. Many Muslims don't have a beard. So it's a good month where you can follow the sunnah of the Prophet. The sunnah of the Prophet about the du'as of when you enter the home, when you leave the toilet, the du'a that is there when you're traveling in a vehicle. Subhanallah. So this is a good month in which you can adopt as much as sunnah as possible so that we can be on the straight path. This is a very good month where you should see to it that you should offer the salah. Not only the five times salah, which is the fard, even try and offer as many nawafil and sunnah. And if you're not habituated to reading in congregation, see to it that you're in a congregation and as far as possible go to the mosque for the salah. In this month we should be particular that we do not miss the tarawi. Many people think, and it is a fact that it is a sunnah, but many people think that because it is a sunnah, we can miss tarawi. Tarawi is a very important sunnah. Though it's not a fard, but every Muslim should make it a point that as far as possible, they should attend tarawi. 
because of the blessings it has. So Tarawih is very important, which Muslims should never miss. And when we offer Tarawih, many of us, we rush through Tarawih because we want to complete the Quran. And many of them read the Tarawih 100 miles per hour. We should read the Tarawih with patience at a moderate pace so that people can understand what is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that if time permits and if possible, we should try and do etikaf in the last 10 days. And while doing etikaf, make it a point that we don't socialize. Many will make a mistake of socializing during etikaf. The whole purpose of etikaf is defeated. Furthermore, we should do more dua in this month. We should do more supplications. This is the month of dua. And we should do more zikr. Spend time in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also worshipping Him. This is the month in which we should try and read as much as Quran as possible. Besides reciting the Quran in Arabic, if you know Arabic as a language, then there's no problem. But if you don't know, then also read the translation of the Quran in the language we understand the best. If you understand English, read in English. If you understand Urdu, read in Urdu. Read it in the language you understand the best. But while reciting the Quran, for which we get a sawab, also read the translation of the Quran so that you can implement on the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If possible, read the Quran once in every seven days, or at least read one juz every day so that you complete the Quran at least once in the full month of Ramadan. In this month, try and read as much as hadith as possible. But see to it that you read the authentic hadith. And the best book on hadith is the book of Sayy al-Bukhari. Then it's Sayy Muslim. You can read the other Qutub al also. But read authentic books on hadith. Read books on the lifestyle and the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See to it that if you have not given the zakat, please give the zakat which is an obligatory charity. And every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of his saving every lunar year in charity. That is zakat. And many people, they do not calculate the zakat properly. You make it a point that you calculate the zakat honestly, and it is better to give a little bit more rather than to give less. So calculate it properly and see to it that you give your zakat. And this Ramadan is a month of generosity. It's a month of sadqa. And you get 10 times more reward for your good deeds. So this is the month where you should do maximum charity. And besides that, we should make it a point that during this month, we should be cheerful. Many of the Muslims, they look dull, they look gloomy. We should be cheerful and happy. And we should give more time to our family. Many times we neglect our family. We just see to it that we give more time to our family and do all these activities collectively. We should also have husni saluk to the people around you. That means we should deal with the other human beings with mercy, with love, with care. If they have done some mistakes, they forgive them. This is the month of forgiveness. If you have done something wrong to them, ask for forgiveness. Live with the people around you with love, care, and with affection. We should to tafakkul. That means ponder on the things. See to it that you plan your month of Ramadan. Plan it properly. And see to it that you do not waste not even a minute, not even a second. This is the month of gaining. And this month is the best month for self-improvement also. And besides that, you should also make it a point to do islah with your other Muslim brothers and sisters. It's also the best month to do dawah. That is, convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. So it's my request to the brothers and sisters that plan your month efficiently and see to it that you utilize every second of the blessed month. Amen. Now we'll have a short break. Inshallah, we'll meet again. It is Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. And I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we're discussing the topic, let's welcome Ramadan. So Dr. Zakir, 
Ramadan is a month of opportunities. It's a month of blessed opportunities. What are the conditions that a person needs to have these deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The basic two conditions are, number one, is the intention. It should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Whatever deed you do, it should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. This is very important. If this condition is not met, then all your deeds are wasted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Bayyana, chapter number 98, verse number 5, it says that you worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you do it only for him and for no one else. It is further mentioned in Surah Insan, chapter number 76, verse number 9. It says that we have fed you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not require any reward from you, nor do we require any returns. That means if you feed someone, it is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not seeking a reward or not seeking anything in return. This is a very important factor that we should note. All your actions should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a very important factor. And further it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 20, that if you do a deed for the tilt, for the reward in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply your reward, your tilt in the hereafter. And if you do a deed or any action for a reward in this world, Allah will give you the reward in this world, but you'll have no share in the hereafter. Allah repeated that message in Surah Hud, chapter number 11, verse number 15 and 16, that anyone who seeks the reward in this world or does any deed for this world and for the glitter of this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely give him in this world, but he will have no share in the hereafter except fire except hell. And all his deeds will not be useful in the hereafter. So therefore, whatever we do should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second caliph of Islam, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, hadith number one, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, which means your deeds are judged on your intention. And the Prophet further said that all your actions are based on your intention. And anyone who has migrated for Allah and His Rasul, he has migrated for Allah and His Rasul. If anyone has an hijrah migrated for the worldly benefits or for marriage, he has migrated for the worldly benefits and marriage. So niyah is very important. And this is further repeated in another hadith, in Sahih Muslim, volume number four, hadith number 7114. It says that our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am alone sufficient. I do not require any associate. And if anyone does any deed for anyone else, as well as for me, I renounce that for the person who he has associated to. That means you can't do part of the deed for Allah and part for someone else. You have to do completely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only for him and no one else. Allah does not like anyone associating anything with him. That's very important. So this is the basic point that is the niya. The second point to be noted for our deed to be acceptable is that our deed should be based on the sharia. It should be in accordance to Allah and His Rasul, accordance to the teachings of the Quran and teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. It's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number three, hadith number four to six seven, where our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that if your deeds and actions are not according to our way, according to the religion of Islam, according to Quran and Sahih Hadith, then that is rejected. That means for a deed to be accepted, it should be according to Quran and Sahih Hadith. And it's also mentioned in another Sahih Hadith of Abu Dawud, volume number three, Hadith number 4950, 
our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he told the people that follow my example and the example of Khulfa Rashidin. That's the rightly guided caliphs. So if you follow them and cling to it with eye teeth, that means strongly follow it. The sunnah of the Prophet, my sunnah, the Prophet said that his sunnah, his way and the way of the Khulfa Rashidin. That is rightly guided caliphs. So for a deed to be accepted, a niya should be only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it should be according to the Sharia, Quran and Sahih Hadith. SubhanAllah. Jazakallah khair for those answers. Now, alhamdulillah, this is the part of the show, as we promised that if, time permitting, we had time to uh, receive some of your questions relating to the topic, we would do so. And we do have a little bit of time. So, Dr. Zakia, first question. People welcome Ramadan with certain sayings. Ramadan Mubarak. Some people say it's a bidah and others say it's a sunnah. What is your uh, ruling on this? To welcome month is good, alhamdulillah. And our Prophet always informed the other people about this month. And as I mentioned earlier, that a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi it's mentioned in Musnad Ahmad, Ram number 2, page number 230, Hadith number 7148, which is also repeated. It is mentioned in Sunan Nisai, chapter number 5, Hadith number 2106, that a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to always tell the people when the month used to approach, when it used to come. The Prophet used to tell the people in advance, O oh people, the blessed month of Ramadan is approaching you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you that you fast in this month. So the Prophet used to welcome this month. He used to wish other people. The same way today, if we wish, as the Prophet said, the blessed month is approaching. If someone says Ramadan Mubarak, this Ramadan Mubarak is more often said in the Indian subcontinent by the Indians, by the Pakistanis, because this word Mubarak, though Barqa is an Arabic word, Barqa means blessing, and it is nothing but blessed month. But when the Indians and Pakistanis, when they use the word Mubarak, it is more of a sort of congratulation. When someone passes examination, they say Mubarak in Urdu, which is derived from the Arabic word Barqa. So when Ramadan comes, they wish Ramadan Mubarak, saying that it is the blessed month, or a sort of congratulating and wishing each other that the blessed month is approaching. So according to me, it's not a bidah. You can welcome the month. It's a good thing that you're calling this month a blessed month, and you're informing other people, reminding them that in this month is a lot of blessing. So according to me, it's not a bidah. But how you wish, the words you choose, that is Mubah, that's optional. Like in Indian subcontinent, we use the word Ramadan Mubarak. In the Gulf countries, they use Ramadan Kareem. So all these words are good, the holy month or the blessed month or the month of forgiveness. So the choice of the words is yours. But the Prophet Wasallam, he used to say to the people that, oh people, the blessed month of Ramadan is approaching. So I feel people should wish each other and they should remind each other about this blessed month. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair. Dr. Zakir Naik, that brings an end to the questions, unfortunately. We don't have more time. Otherwise, you can answer so many others that we've received on email from our viewers of PCV. Brothers and sisters, Jazakallah khair. It has been an absolute pleasure listening to Dr. Zakir Naik's uh, answers today on Let's Welcome Ramadan. Tomorrow, we'll be discussing common errors which are made by Muslims during the month of Ramadan. So I hope you'll join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.